This episode of the Gentleman Scoff Law podcast is brought to you by Patreon and the Gentleman Scoff Law merchandise page. Go to gentlemanscofflaw.com. In the menu, click the support or shop links to help support the show. You are listening to the Gentleman Scoff Law podcast. Listener beware. Rise and shine, the liquor store is open. I ain't got time for moping. I best be on my way. Well, I still got time to save my reputation. Time to go day drinking in this dirty little town. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Gentleman's Golf Law Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Crowder. And with me in person, as usual, is the Donovan Fowler. And all the way in the Great White North is Johnny Boy. Hi. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm Real great. swell. Yeah, you guys are good. Um, of course, this is a podcast for the Rebel and the Renaissance Man. Um, let's start off with some housekeeping here. As you know, I always smoke a pipe on this show. Um, but today in Los Angeles, it is balls hot. So I am not going to be smoking yeah, we're anything sweating, today. Sweating bullets over here um, on the West Coast. But John, what do you got there in your glass? Oh, Pabst. Pabst. Okay. Pabst. Okay. Pabst. All, all right, right. No, that's that's a, that's all right. Of the cheap beers, I uh, I think that's a, that's a that's a better option. Old PBR. Nothing's <laughs> cheap in Canada. Get that no. blue ribbon. All those government, uh, uh, what do you call it, vice taxes? Here's, here's a question: Do you guys have like um, on the back of that? Do you have like a unit uh, thing? Like, does it tell you how many units that is? Because in the UK, they have like a, a recommended units per week that people. It's can cold. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> how many cold units do they have or what's the, the the hot sauce or the the pepper the scoville units or whatever it's called mm. maybe no i don't know i, I don't i don't <laughs> and does we, not <laughs> we are drinking some evan williams kentucky straight bourbon whiskey on ice and we've got the uh this special edition bottle here it's called the american hero edition yep and so it's red white and blue and it's got a little uh story of a veteran on it um and speaking of heroes um, how about, I mean, I'm not, not, I'm, I don't, this is not disrespectful at all, but we want to say thank you to all the first responders that are out there in Houston right now dealing with uh, Hurricane Harvey. Indeed. Um, and if you guys want to help out, if you want to donate, oh, we're going to put a link in the show notes, uh, so you can help out with all the needs over there in Houston. Um, Penis at 12. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we go nice from segue. Hurricane Harvey to delayed development uh, of puberty. Uh, well, before, oh we get to, before we get to Penis at 12, I forgot to tease. Uh, we're going to have Peter Manelga, uh, co-owner of Wops Hops uh, Brewery, and we're going to learn about beer today um, and all the all the new cool stuff they're doing at the micro brews. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. But uh, which now, uh, uh, Penis at 12, I was reading this article and a friend brought it to my attention. Um, ever since we discovered that my uh, cockatiel Ernie is an, er, an, er, an Ernesta four years into uh, our relationship, apparently there's this one region in the Dominican Republic where um, 12-year-olds um, that are, are typically women um, or little girls will get uh, their penis at 12 years old. Well, and it's wait, a surprise. Wait. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's clear something up here. I read the article too, yeah. and it's they are boys. They are they're boys. boys, but they're mistaken for girls yeah. at birth because they, they don't have – they haven't developed. Yeah. So they haven't gotten – I think that the explanation is they haven't gotten their second surge of testosterone that develops – the things that make you a man. Yeah. So at 12, this surge ends up happening. So it's a major identity crisis and, and, and it's kind of weird. And it's pretty bizarre. The reason why I called it penis at 12 is apparently they're called the, this phenomenon, they're called the guevedoches, which that means, uh, literally translates to penis at 12, <laughs> which <laughs> I I'd rather, know. I'd rather a rifle at 12 myself. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was I was well. reading the article and it was really funny because it's like, uh, wait, bring it up again. I feel like uh, I want to look up the name of the the kid who was like the main study. So uh, this this one who, who they thought was a girl and they named her Felicita, but then when they uh, when they found out that she was in fact a he, they just went with Johnny. Like, 
it's almost <laughs> like they put all the like it was like this very like Felicita has like a lot of probably a lot of meaning behind it. You yeah. know, all that stuff it sounds it was really just like, feminine. Oh, OK, got a <laughs> got something else down there. Oh, I guess we'll just call you Johnny. But uh, I also laughed at the fact that like they asked him, they were like, uh, what's it like? And he's like, well, the kids on the playground make fun of me. But, you know, I just kick their ass it's like he just flipped the switch <laughs> he just and was flipped like the switch <laughs> yeah i'm a boy <laughs> i'm a boy now and you yeah. guys are going to deal with it um yeah. i don't know I, I i just thought now that since we it were is, on the subject but, but to be yeah it is a very weird phenomenon how do you feel about this john how do, uh, how do, was i was Canada's depressed for an feeling? entirely different reason uh <laughs> now i just don't know how i feel really what's what, what's 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 going on why are you depressed john yeah well, last week they re-released Terminator 2 Judgment Day in the theater in 3D, which oh, yeah. is really cool, and I really wanted to see it, but I didn't get a chance. This week they're releasing Close Encounters of the Third Kind for its 40th anniversary. Oh, I saw that. And I got depressed because I would rather see those than anything that's come out this year. Really? That's a terrible feeling. Wait a minute. Really? Wait, I feel like something came out this year that you liked. Dawn of the oh, Planet of the Apes? Yeah. No, I, I'd rather I liked War for the Planet it, of the Apes. I think if I was given an option, I would rather see That's Terminator true. in 3D Terminator. than Planet of the, the Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was at USC seeing like a pre-screening of that movie. And uh, this kid behind me, they like they they had the poster come up on uh, on screen, and it was like you know the all, the huge ape army, and he just goes like he's like, holy crap, there are monkeys in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so you know, I what was the one that you and I saw, John, like a lo- like maybe like fifteen years ago with Mark Wahlberg? That was like the re. The, the reboot, oh, that was the, uh, right? that was the, the Tim Burton one. Yeah. That was pretty <laughs> terrible. But is yeah. this stuff? Are these new you know, Planet of the Apes? Are they part of that universe, or is it a no, new no, reimagining? No, no, no. It's a whole new re. Yeah. What, okay. what is it? Re it, uh, franchising. Yeah, I don't know okay. what they call reboot. it. Yeah, it, it's it's basically um, they they aren't like behold they aren't beholden to anything before, but they stick to kind of the mythology of the originals. Okay. So like the Charlton Heston one, but. Yeah. Um, it's funny because that 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 one that you were talking about with Marky Mark, he specifically, you know how Charlton Heston in the original kind of goes around and most of the time in a loincloth. Yeah. Well, Marky Mark specifically like had it written into his contract that he was not going to do that because <laughs> he had just come <laughs> off of he had just come off of like having a career as basically like an underwear model yeah. in between the Funky Bunch and, yeah. and his film career, and he was like he didn't want to he just didn't want to be that anymore. So if you watch, he's like fully clothed the whole time, like he never takes his shirt off or anything. That's pretty funny. Not like I, I don't have a problem with that, but you know. You know, you could pick up Planet of the Apes on, on Blu-ray. You know, you get a pretty good deal if you get it at Costco. Really? Oh, I think you just brought up a sore subject for Donovan. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, let's go no. into why I'm... I just poured myself another drink at the mention <laughs> of it. Um, let's go into why I'm depressed this week. Um, unfortunately, my Costco membership, it's... Uh, it's on uh, its last legs today. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Are you not going to renew? I'm thinking about it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I'm just, you know, I, I just, I just got to, I just got to take some time to, to mourn this it's first too, year. Too much of a luxury. Yeah. I think I have two months, to be honest with you, oh, to really? consider renewing. I will renew. I love Costco. Let yeah. me just, let me just put it that way. I love Costco. But, um, but, you know, it's, uh, I just don't like the Costco experience. I feel like every time I enter what? and leave, I'm made to feel like a criminal. I just like, drop my Let me see spinner. your ID <laughs> on the way in, and then on the way out, it's like, Whoa, let's look at your receipt. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait Make a minute. Make sure you're not hey, ripping us off. Let's let's just take it easy here. Calm down here. <laughs> they don't even look at your ID when you walk in. All you have oh, to they do used is to flash at one point. a... Like, it literally, if you just had construction paper, like red and blue construction paper that looked like a Costco card, they'd let you in. <laughs> I flashed and, my bus pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? They, 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 they don't care. And, uh, and as far it's as... It's because like, they know you're not going to get out. And as far as the receipts concerned, you know, you know why they do that? 
because they want to make sure that you have a, a, a good experience returning things because it's inevitable that you're always going to return things at Costco because they have the best return policy ever. Yeah, but why would you return something if you were ha- happy with it? Well, <laughs> let's put it this way. Let's say let's say you 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 get something and like hypothetically you wear it like two times. Like let's say you get a jacket that's like maybe like I don't know fifty bucks at Costco. Yeah, you wear it like two times and then eventually like six months down the line you're like yeah you know I don't really like this jacket or I already have a jacket that I you know that I can wear you can take it back six you, months down the line you know who else has a good return <laughs> you know who also has a return a good return policy Coles. is uh well them too because I I I've done this before but I, I probably shouldn't say this on the podcast they'll take back anything and I'll always buy the same I always get the same old Levi's 501 jeans <laughs> and two three months down the line they always rip in the same place Ooh. in my crotch mm-hmm. and I take them in and say I'm not happy with these and they give me a new pair of jeans so I never have to buy jeans that's not a faulty pair of jeans it's a it's faulty just crotch the same, <laughs> it's the same guy every time it's he's just um, finding your ripped crotch well, like every time well I was actually going to say REI because REI actually has a really? year to return anything you buy. Yeah, but here, see the REI experience. I, I will take Costco over REI any day of the week because mm-hmm. you can buy booze at Costco and not mm-hmm. at REI. But um, also REI, just I feel like they're hostile. Like I feel like they're somewhat elitist. Really? Yeah, I've been in REIs before. Like for example, once I went in, I think I was looking for boots or something uh, around Thanksgiving, and just to kind of like ask. Um, I'm not a huge, uh, what is black Friday shopper? Yeah. Like I don't really do that, but I just asked, I was like, well, do you have any deals like coming up on black Friday? And the girl gave me such a look. She was like, "Mm -hmm. we don't do black Friday. (laughs) (laughs) And I was just like, well, thanks. I (laughs) just rest like a hiker and never actually (laughs) use the equipment. I just feel like, uh, yeah. I mean, REI's. I don't know. All right, Indeed. now it's time to go for a Sir Crowder's restroom review of the week. Oh dear. All right. Uh, today we have another uh, uh, restroom review, um, but it's not by me. It's by a guest reviewer, and that guest reviewer is uh, our very own Johnny Boy. So Johnny Boy, <laughs> let's go to your uh, restroom review. Tell us about your restroom. Okay, the Marriott Hotel in the heart of Montreal may not be your first conjure when thinking about the nicest facility in the city. And it's not. The cleanliness rating just a touch above par, urinals lacking privacy dividers and a stack of paper hand towels left willy-nilly on the countertop do not a luxurious facility make. What it lacks in posh, it more than makes up with its view. A single pane of curved plate glass gives a panorama of cascading rooftops, the gridlock almost calming from its 36th floor perch. Traveler's note, the 36th floor is reserved for conference rooms, so be sure to grab a welcome bag from one of the office conventions on the way out. <laughs> um, I, I, I love those little bags they give out at the conferences. There's always a bunch of like good goodies in there. It's like, Swag. Pens and 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 uh, you know uh, you know little cool things that you can keep around your office that I keep around for a month and then I end up giving to the Goodwill because uh, the Goodwill <laughs> needs my crap. Um, I'm surprised though. It seemed like the Marriott would be a nicer bathroom. I was surprised too, but that view looking over the park, you kind of forget where you are. Okay, so it's kind of like a trade-off, right? You know, that's you're, right. That's right. They blind you with the beauty of the view, and it's, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like how Los Angeles is is mostly a hellhole, but uh, the weather's nice. So <laughs> it's a trade-off, <laughs> except for today, where oh, yeah. I'm literally like this week. covered in sweat. I know we're covered in sweat right now. We should just turn on the fans. I think. We, okay, we're suffering for you, the listener, we're, right we're, now. We yeah, shut yeah. off the fan so you we're, wouldn't get an annoying. But you know hum. What? This is like I've always said. I, I'd like a private sauna in my house, and yeah. I feel like this. We're just living it right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. And in a pot <laughs> with a podcast. So I mean, you know. <laughs> Make uh, lemonade out of lemons, I guess. Well, thank you for that uh, review, Johnny Boy. Now let's go to a little segment we call Listener Mail. All right. Um, 
This is the segment where we interact with you, the listener, and we appreciate your interactions with us. You can interact with us on social media, all the links on our website, and you can also leave us an iTunes review, which is very helpful in our uh, search rankings and our iTunes rankings and Stitcher. You can leave it on Stitcher, too, if that's the way you listen. Um, But that also gives us um, prompts to talk about on the show. It's like, basically, it's like if you were to go to an improv show, right? You get suggestions from the audience, right? And then then you work on it. That's kind of what this is. Sometimes those suggestions are pretty horrendous and funny. Once One time I was at an improv show and somebody goes, Orange! (laughs) I'm like, come on, what... (laughs) <laughs> you're like the fruit or the color because yeah. they're both terrible. I know they're both terrible. All right, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, John. What is our first? Uh, what does that iTunes review say? Okay, this one is from Tim Drake Robin Three. Uh, the title is "This is a podcast worth catching," and he gives us how many stars? Is that five? Wow, five stars. Oh, so all, all the stars. That's a lot of stars. At first glance, this might seem rather unimpressive as far as podcasts go. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him that. I, I think that's an automatic that. star deduction right there. Uh, <laughs> however, if you give your podcatcher a chance to capture the gentleman's scoff law, then listen uh, at the punches of hilarity that come out of this awesome three-headed podcast i guarantee it will have been worth your time searching for a podcast that lives up to the hype mm-hmm. i don't mm-hmm. know why there's a semicolon in there but thank you, you know, jim drake robin three you know what they uh say about three-headed podcasts what you cut one head off two others spring up so no. if we ever want to add, add somebody, all we have to do is kill. All we have kill, to do is, is fire you, Donovan. And then, what, uh, what was it that uh, that Michael Scott said? That if he was trapped in a room with uh, a gun yeah. with two bullets, Hitler, uh, Saddam Bin Hussein, Laden, and Toby, and, he yeah. said he'd oh, shoot yeah. Toby twice. Toby twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, well, thank you for that. And what is that? Uh, we've got a little uh, a comment here from Instagram, uh, Donovan. What does that say? All right, this is from Beans and Balance. Really enjoying the podcast, guys. I have su- I have a suggestion for you guys to try and review the Durango cigars made from pipe tobacco, and also get you some Lion Distilling ninety proof rum <laughs> to sip over ice. Yes, a smooth ninety proof sipping rum on one of your shows keep up the great work did i read that right i feel like there's no I feel that's like, right that's good I, I feel like that was one long sentence and i just was <laughs> well, trying that's, to, that's to be what instagram comments but you know what doing. this guy beans and balance he gets me yeah because i've been saying you know today even though bourbon is is a wonderful thing to drink when it's hot yeah you know what's even better a little bit of rum. Oh, yeah that'd be perfect for today i don't know right. hey, up way, to, way to open up your pabst over my uh <laughs> my my endorsement of of another great but drink I, I might be interested to try that from Durango Cigars because I am um, Durango Cigars. If yeah. you're listening, uh, we'd love to sample that because I don't mm. smoke cigars often, right? Yeah. But uh, I do enjoy a cigar every now and then. But I think I, I enjoy pipes better than cigars. I've become, I, I think I, you know, honestly, I'm going to be candid here. I think I've become more of a cigar guy than a pipe. Thank you, Donovan. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You Do know, you I saw my me? very, f- I saw my very first public pipe smoker this week. Yeah, I was so happy. I was smiling at him. I was going to say something, but he gave me a look, so I didn't approach. <laughs> <laughs> was it like, uh, was it like that episode of Seinfeld where George meets Elaine's dad, and he's like. <laughs> He's like this very gruff, like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but like, yeah, anyways. Oh, Let's go to this uh, this uh, YouTube comment we have from JDog404, man. And it says, the heavy breather Jordan Crowder puts out his own <laughs> podcast. Why? You were terrible on Louder with Crowder, and you suck even more by yourself. Please stop putting your voice on the airwaves. Wait, can we just emphasize that he, when he said why, he put three question marks <laughs> as in like he wants that answered immediately or wanted to resound through the, the Twitterverse. Um, yeah, you know what though? You gotta give me some slack about the heavy breathing. I've got terrible allergies, okay? He does. I'm like a bulldog, okay? Yeah. I, I, my face is constantly <laughs> congested, so uh, I apologize for that. I can't and control to be it. Fair, to be fair, it might be me. 
It, it might, might be even you. be me. Well, it's it all might of us just be wrongly point. attributed. <laughs> in the off so, chance that it's me, I don't apologize at all. Every once in a while, I drink myself to sleep during the podcast, and I fall asleep on the microphone, so it comes out like... <sighs> <laughs> and he, say, he says I was terrible on Louder with Crowder, and I, I understand. I know that. You know, I was there, I was there to help out. Oh, with louder with Crowder when they launched a daily show. I was never meant to be on air. So, hey, 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 listen, this is an objective opinion. It's not just because I know you. I really enjoyed you on Liar with Crowder. I missed (laughs) you when you left. I missed you when you left. And you know what? Whenever you talked, I was like, why don't they give that guy his own camera? (laughs) Like, what's with this wide angle BS? (laughs) Oh, but yeah, thank you, J Dog. Yeah, J Dog. It's always nice to be kept on our toes. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for uh, keeping, you know, keeping me humble, which I appreciate. Um, And I'll still keep putting it out because I just can't stop. It's a problem for me um <laughs> let's go for a quick break <laughs> and we'll come back with peter manelga of wops hops brewing scoff laws i wanted to take a second to talk to you about patreon um now if you've never heard of patreon basically it's a platform for creators for 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 patrons who are fans of a a, a given creator to help support their creation. So we have a Patreon page for the Gentleman Scofflaw podcast. You could support the show for as little as a dollar an episode, which is like what? Is it is cheaper than a, than a Starbucks coffee, right? So maybe give up uh, one. Why does everyone always do that? They say it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. Okay, what what else do you spend a dollar on? Uh, maybe uh, you know it's it's cheaper than uh, you know buying uh, you know uh, Q-tips. You know maybe you don't need Q-tips for the month. You know maybe this month you avoid Q-tips, right? I don't know. I mean, I hear they're bad for you anyway, but maybe maybe that's not true. I I don't. Maybe maybe don't sacrifice anything related to health. Um, for for the dollar an episode but um patreon is great because uh you the patron also gets rewards for uh joining the patreon so uh examples of stuff that we have are extended interviews and outtakes stuff that gets cut out of the episode that you don't hear for time's sake because we try to keep a tight you know entertaining show and sometimes there is some gold that doesn't make the final cut so you get to listen to some of that um also you get uh, behind-the-scenes videos, photos, and bonus episodes. For example, we did a bonus episode at the Big Shave West, um, which was a lot of fun. So more of those type of things are coming, as well as monthly live video hangouts where you can interact with us in person, which is a lot of fun. We've done a couple of of, of free ones to test it out, and it's been a lot of fun. We get to talk with uh, the listeners in real time and get to know them, and uh, they get to ask questions, and it's it's always a good time. And here's the piece de resistance is um, when we hit our, our, our goal mark, we are launching a whole new movie review podcast, a gentleman's golf law movie review podcast. Since, you know, we're, we're all of us on the show are writers and filmmakers, and that's our background. We love movies. Um, we're going to go through a catalog of what we think are either gentlemen or scofflaw-esque movies. Um, so if you join, you'll get that show as well. Everyone who joins on Patreon at any one of the tiers, even at the dollar an episode, gets a free Gentleman Scofflaw vinyl sticker, which is super cool. It's like a full color sticker. You, could, you know, it's uh, really sticky. You could stick it on, uh, you know, anything you want to stick it on. Also, you'll get thanked on the air for your support. So check out patreon.com slash gentscofflaw, or you could go to gentlemanscofflaw.com and click the support link on our menu, and it'll take you right there. We look forward to seeing you on Patreon, and thank you for supporting the show. All right, I'm very excited to have this next guest, uh, Peter Manelga. He is the brewery engineer at Wops Hops Brewing Company in Sanford, Florida. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm excited about this. I'm a big fan of beer, um, which... uh, 
you know, a lot of we had a sommelier on a couple of weeks ago that said if you're a beer fan, a lot of people think that you're uh, that you're a frat boy, or that's kind of a that's kind of that used to be kind of in the popular culture. People would think of you that way, but beer has uh, come a long way in the last couple of decades. So <laughs> let's talk a little. Beer about has that. definitely <laughs> involved a lot. Yeah, um, your your sommelier saying, you know, well, beer is for frat boys and stuff. <laughs> um, kind of, you know, let's say 30 years ago, maybe, yeah. um, we still have this certain aspect of the population where, you know, they want a Bud Light or, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's more of, um, the craft beer is much more of an open field and it's less restricted than your wines. So yeah. we basically can do whatever we want. There's no set. Yeah. You know, it's got to be a, um, a Pinot Grigio. It has to be a Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. Now we can do whatever the heck we want. Yeah. This is pretty cool. I mean, I mean, first of all, let's let's back it up a little bit. How did you get into this? Like, the, the, I want to hear a little bit about your story and how you got into beer and brewing and all and all that. All right. Stuff. Um, <laughs> I got a good buddy named Greg. I've known him for about 25 years. He's my business partner okay. and he's my co-owner. Um, and he got into home craft brewing probably about nine years ago. Oh, wow. He did some really cool stuff. We used to come out or him and his family used to come out and hang out at my place at the pool. We drink his stuff, you know, Hey, this is good. You know, how'd you make this? And what do you think about, uh, trying this other style, you know, let's brew me a size on or something. And he'd go ahead and he'd do it. And the more he did it, the better he got at it. Wow. He was in law enforcement for 20 years and he decided to retire before he ended up on the wrong side of law enforcement. He was a probation officer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, uh, he decided, you know, with a little bit of encouragement from his friends to go for it. And he called me up and asked me, you know, if I'd give him a hand with it. And I said, yeah, sure. Why not? That's and awesome. that's how I got into it. That's awesome. <laughs> well, like, I, I feel like a lot of people now, because beer people are getting into beer, they are getting into trying to do their own home brewing. Is I mean, is that a good idea? Like, because I, I, I haven't tried it, but I think of, like, my friends that have made homemade wine, and it always really sucked. <laughs> And they're always pushing it on you. Like, is is doing home anything like that a good idea? <laughs> well, yes. They, you can go to your local homebrew shop and get kits, what they call uh, beginner kits. They're made from extracts. You don't actually uh, grow your own yeast. You don't go through grains or anything like that. It's just yeah. pretty much, you know, painting by numbers of beer making. Okay. <laughs> and that works out quite often. Okay. Because you're following a set recipe, right? At that point. Correct. Okay. And, uh, the biggest thing is follow the recipe and keep the right temperature. Yeah. People at the, people at the wart, that's the, what you call your young beer, okay. uh, varying temperature as it's fermenting. And that's what messes up the flavors a lot. So people at home go, well, you know, I followed the recipe exactly, but it didn't come out. Okay. Well, that's because you didn't quite follow it exactly. <laughs> you, know, you, you might have had it by the window. It was sunny one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, could, could you walk us through like what the process is from taking you know the grain and how it ends up in your glass at a at a brewery or a pub or uh, what's the process from start to finish? Because I never completely understood how that how that is done. All right, I'll give you the cliff note version. Of that's it. fine. <laughs> uh, the, the grains, we call them malt because they're actually par-cooked. Okay. So it brings out some of the natural sugars in it. All right. And we get the grains by the 50-kilo bags. Oh, well. We have big. a mill, and the mill actually just cracks the outer husk of it. It doesn't strip it away. It's not like a flour mill. Okay. From that, we drop it into a boil kettle, and the, it's actually called a mash ton where we soak the grains with water, you know, warm water, about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. That process takes a couple of hours. Then we transfer it to the boil kettle. The boil kettle is where we go ahead and we add the certain adjuncts to it. Um, 
depending on the style of beer, you know, we might boil it for about an hour and a half and then an hour into the boil, we'll start dropping in some of the hops. Um, if it's like a honey oatmeal stout, then we'll put in some actually oats, raw oats into it during the boil. Cool. From there, once we're done, you cool down the wort, which is now called, <laughs> and we pump it over to our fermenter tanks. These stainless steel vessels, they're jacketed so we can run cool water around them to control the exact temperature. Okay. Once we get it cooled down to 70 degrees, we go ahead and we add the yeast to it. Yeast is this funny little thing that pretty much eats sugars and excretes alcohol and poops more yeast. <laughs> so that's how they grow. Um, that'll take about a week or so in a fermentation tank. Once the yeast reaches the, at the end of its life cycle, pretty much, um, and it stops fermenting, from there, we're not going to bruise our beer anymore, so we're not going to pump it. What okay. we do is we push it into what we call a bright tank. And the bright tank is where we do some of the clarification. Uh, we, do, we just pressurize the vessel, you know, open up the valves on the bottom of the fermenter, and that goes ahead and pushes it into the bright tank. The bright tank, then we carbonate it. Okay. That takes two or three days. And from the bright tank, we put it into kegs. And then from the kegs, we sell it to our customers. Wow. That's quite All the right. process. It's, yeah. I, I wonder. Well, again, that's the. Again, that's a Cliff Notes version. It's yeah. a little bit more. No, I, no, but I mean, just <laughs> thinking of just seeing those steps is quite a bit to get to it. Um, I want what I want to know is how, who decided, like, who discovered that? Because you have to go through a lot of <laughs> steps to, like, oh, if I do all these things, this will be really good in the end. You know, that's always what I wonder. <laughs> Um, <laughs> beer is probably one of the oldest alcoholic beverages there is. It's older than wine. Oh, wow. Really? Um, people just, uh, discovered the process like everybody else through experimentation and, yeah. and accidents <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much beer saved the world. Wow. Yeah. Cause I hear that, I don't know if this is true, but I hear like back when, you know, water purification wasn't as, you know, we didn't have the technology that we do nowadays. It was safer to drink alcohol because at least it was sterile. It was something that couldn't Correct. poison you. <laughs> and that is literally how beer saved the world. It stopped people from having dys dysentery and, and uh, all this, you know, all the diseases and everything that came with it. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Um, that, well, uh, the carbonation process of it, because I mean, that, uh, what, I mean, how do you, how would early, like you say, it's older than wine. How would, what would right. have been the carbonation process, you know, back in, you know, whatever BC, like how would they have done that? Was it just non carbonated or? No, it's natural carbonation. Okay. Um, the other byproduct of yeast is CO2. Okay. That makes so sense. it, 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 it off gases CO2 in its life cycle. Okay. So natural carbonation, you can do that. It just takes a lot longer. Okay. Do, do any so, breweries still do it that way or do they, or do they always uh, add it after? There's some places that, yeah, they do it like that. Oh, wow. That's but they're talking, you know, we're talking huge places that have six months to come out with a beer. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, in terms of the raw ingredients, what affects the flavor of beer more? Would it be the, the grain or the yeast or the how quickly you're able to cool it? Um, it's actually, it's a combination of two of those. The cooling, how fast you can cool it, um, pretty much won't affect it that much as long as you can get it within two hours for going from boil into your fermenter. But for different flavors, you want to get a nice... Um, chocolatey note to it then you have dark roast it's kind of like your coffees you can get mm -hmm. a really light roast coffee and you can get a dark roast coffee like an espresso mm -hmm. just the the grains are roasted longer so you get that chocolate a coffee and the other part of it is the yeast that's a really good question because the yeast there are so many different strains and they've been cultured for so long now that i can use this the exact same malts and produce the exact same wort, but use different types of yeast. I can make it taste more like a wine. I, there's a yeast that I actually make it taste like bananas. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> the, the, the malt and, or the wort, I should say, 
made from the grain and the yeast both combine to come up with very different flavors. That's great. They're both just as important. The interesting about, thing about yeast is it it's alive. Mm-hmm. So I was reading about different oh. kinds of sourdough and breads, and the strain of yeast that they used originally goes back hundreds of years, and they're able to yeah. harvest this is the exact same strain of yeast as was available you know generations ago yeah there's a, a yeast made in the um, a yeast there's a yeast culture in lithuania the brewery over there is called Shvituris, which means lighthouse oh. and they've been brewing beer um since the 1600s and it's the exact same strain of yeast they culture it they grow it um they modify it a little bit they get fresh fresh yeast in there just to keep it uh, virulent and and up to date, let's say, keep it strong, but they won't tell anybody what it is. (laughs) And so, so this thing's been going on for over 400 years and it's the exact same strain of yeast. Wow. That's insane. That's amazing. That's that's, that's really crazy. And it's funny that you said you have the the, uh, strain that can make it taste like banana because I feel like I've had I've had beer where I'm like, there's it it doesn't say any banana on the bottle or whatever in terms of its description. Like this tastes like banana beer to me. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's what it is. It's crazy. That's that's insane. So what? Like you mentioned, you know, there are a lot of people that still drink the Bud Lights, the Coors, the the kind of the what I call the crappy American beers that you can get at, the, <laughs> at every grocery store. Um, like, what's do you would you have any advice for like telling someone that that's all that they drink? Like, like what? How could they get started in in expanding their horizons a little bit? <laughs> What they need to do is to find a nice, light-tasting craft beer. Okay. We actually brew one called the Hail Caesar. Oh, nice. And, uh, well, it's Roman. our whole thing is Roman theme. Wops, hops. It's, okay. like, wops is kind of an Italian thing. So yeah, yeah. That's what we go with. <laughs> that's what um, So, anyways, the Hail Caesar, the one we do, we brew, it's made with something called Sriracha Ace hops, okay. which are very mellow, mild. They're not bitter at all. And then we use very, very light grains. So it it looks like a a Bud Light almost. Okay. Um, But then we throw in a little bit of lemongrass. Oh, nice. (laughs) So this gives it a little bit more of an earthy tone. It gives a little bit more flavor, a little bit more body and texture. Yeah. So that's how we get people to start drinking more robust beers. They have to find a gateway beer that's right for them. Yeah. Well, it's funny because like everybody has different palates, right? And I, uh, I never liked beer, but you know, because it was in college and it was a keg of whatever crap they can get for cheapest. And I was like, this, there's nothing fun about this. It's not, doesn't really, I don't really feel anything (laughs) when I drink it because it's pretty low in alcohol compared to a lot of the craft beers and it just doesn't taste very good. And then one point I had a, I forget what it was, but I was out with my brother. He's a beer snob and we had something. I was like, Oh, this is really good. I like this. And it, it totally changed, you know, the way I saw beer. I started seeking out different things. And whenever I go to like a, a restaurant or I try and find out whatever local option they have of something that I could try out that's different. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you're doing the right thing. That's the way to go. Yeah. You just have to keep trying till you find something that you like. Yeah. Why is it that IPA sucks so bad and people <laughs> love them so much? <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, that that's that's kind of a West Coast thing that they, they started off with their IPAs. Yeah. Um, IPA stands for India Pale Ale. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know that or not. I do, yeah. but I don't know why. Why? Why is it called that? <laughs> <laughs> why do they call that? Because yeah. all right, when the Brits were over in India, no, yeah. they would ship them beer because the water was pretty bad over there. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's no refrigeration, no all these wonderful additives that we man, and I say this, you know, a little bit sarcastically, all these wonderful additives that we call preservatives. Yeah. That didn't exist back then. <laughs> but they found out that if they put more hops in it, hops was a natural preservative. Oh, really? So again, through just trying things out and experimentation, they ended up with this beer that, you know, yeah, basically it sucks, but hey, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. 
beer made it here. This is great. <laughs> so they drank their IPAs. And, that, and that's actually what the name means. It's India Pale Ale. Okay. I don't think yeah. we should be taking flavor lessons from the Brits. <laughs> uh, but true. Yeah. And it, makes, and it makes you wonder how bad they needed beer if the Brits who like, you know, plain potatoes actually loved that really hoppy beer. Yeah, that's, that's desperation. Really strange. <laughs> it's, it's weird because I've tried a lot of IPAs because I always – you know, people are always pushing them on me. Oh, you don't like IPAs, but you'll love this one. And I've, I've, there's only two that I could think of that I've liked. And it was the, uh, I think it was the Dogfish Head 90, I think it was okay. called. And then a, one out in California, um, I think it's California, Lagunitas, uh, I, has an IPA and those are the only two ones that I've liked, but they're not that hoppy. So it's, I'm like, are people just saying they like this cause it's a trendy thing or do people have a palate for it? Maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> it's some people is definitely, they're just jumping on that bandwagon. You know, I'm cool. I'm drinking all my IPAs and stuff like that. Yeah. And there are other people that have definitely a taste for it, a palate for it. Um, but uh, IPAs are also known as palate wreckers. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they're so hoppy in there that once you have one, that's it. That's all, the only thing you can taste the rest of the night. Yeah. Personally, um, I do not like IPAs. Yeah. They give me heartburn. <laughs> um, that makes but sense. now we, you know, ours, we make a nice IPA. I, I try a little bit of it and understanding what the beers are supposed to taste like. It's a good IPA. Yeah. doesn't mean I like it, but it's a good IPA. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Um, I tried one uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was called Genius of Suburbia by a company called Flying Monkeys. And it's probably okay. the the most palatable IPA I've had. But I think against a Bud Light Lime, I'd still grab the green can. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you talking about the Limerita? <laughs> Bud Light Limerita? <laughs> don't judge me <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny i i mean i'll tell you what you really want to try a good one a fun one yeah uh there's a company called inglorious bastards oh okay i think i've seen their stuff here yeah, and they make an ipa that um i have diehard a ipa drinkers that just choke on it really <laughs> <They don't like laughs> <Yeah. it. laughs> i'm sorry funny. take that back it's called arrogant bastard oh yeah arrogant bastard yeah, yeah. i've seen i think they're in la based don't they yeah yeah oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> quentin tarantino thing um yeah so i mean i tend to like um more malty beers more like darker beers um I guess stuff that I even like, like, uh, like stouts and stuff. Um, okay. I mean, what's the process of, cause that is, those are, uh, does, does color have anything to do with, with how it's going to taste? Cause I feel like some people, they look at a dark beer and they go, Oh, that's going to be too strong or whatever, but not necessarily. I I've had some that are, you know, that, that don't taste like a dark beer. You would assume what dark beer would taste like. That's actually a great point. Color does not denote heaviness. Okay. And that's a misconception that a lot of people have. Yeah. Uh, if you look at it, actually Guinness, yeah. which everybody thinks of this is the, the stout to go to, right? Yeah. It's a light beer. It's yeah. 3.2%. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. it. It feels heavier. It feels thicker because it's poured on nitrogen. Yeah. Okay. So nitrogen gives it a completely different creamier mouthfeel. Um, it, it, it's a fuller one, but color when you're asking is a little bit of a complicated question too will it affect taste yes because to get that really dark color it means that the grains were roasted a lot more so you have a much darker malt that comes out of it okay so you're going to get those coffee notes those chocolate notes out of it um but you know to mess with people we make something called a golden stout okay <laughs> it looks like a pilsner Okay. It's crystal clear. It's a nice golden yellow color, but it's heavier than our honey oatmeal stout. <laughs> and, and, and we, we put it in front of people and, and it's like, they look at it. It's like, okay, taste it with your eyes closed and tell me what you're drinking. <laughs> and it's like, well, this is a stout. This is a pretty damn heavy stout. It's like, okay, well, what does it look like? Well, it, it, it looks like a, like beer <laughs> <laughs> so 
color does not denote heaviness. Color, yes, will give you different flavors. Okay. That makes sense. Now, we get the real hard coffee note on our golden stock because we cheat. Yeah. We take espresso beans that have only been dried, not roasted. <laughs> uh, so do you, can you, do you, are there a lot of, I don't know what you, what do you call those? Like if you add something that's like, you know, espresso beans or like orange peel and stuff, like what is that called when you add that to the process? That's called an adjunct. An adjunct. Okay. And, and that yeah. was, that's, that seems to be much more common in craft beer than, you know, in the stuff you get at, you know, the Bud Lights, the, the cores and all that stuff, right? Correct. Okay. Um, that's, that's, you know, part of the craft industry is you come up with all these crazy flavors and stuff. Yeah. Um, we do my very first flavor of my own that I chose and they brewed was a buttered rum. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's a cream ale. Um, it's like an adult Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that would be fun. <laughs> so, I mean, we can do all sorts of stuff. For Thanksgiving uh, in the fall, there's been a big trend with pumpkin beers. Yeah. Well, that, that trend's coming to an end. Well, <laughs> seven years ago, we st- it really is. I mean, yeah. we talked to our distributors, and they said, yeah, we're not buying that this year. Sorry. Yeah, it's um, not very. From the, from the big guys. It's a, you know, it, the trend is over. We're not making any sales on this. It sits in a warehouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so seven years ago, we made something out of sweet potatoes. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So we make a sweet potato ale. And we bring it out for Thanksgiving. Basically, it's, it's like a sweet potato pie. We call it Thanksgiving in our glass. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, it's We won top award for it in one of the competitions. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So it, it's a fun little thing. <laughs> I got to try yeah, tell this Tell us out. about uh, morning's, Morning Wood. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> My brewer's uh, Morning It's not wood. that kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it, it might be. You know, uh, <laughs> Depends on beer. how many beers. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so um, this is another seasonal beer we make. It's not always available, but it is a maple bacon brown ale. <laughs> wow. So it is for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, don't they drink beer for breakfast in Ireland anyway? Isn't that what they do? <coughs> so I don't know. It's yes, they do. Somewhere, right? It seems like it's probably a, a stereotype that I'm <laughs> playing a <upon, but laughs> uh, uh, Now, John, as far as that five o'clock somewhere, that's more for margaritas. <laughs> it's beer thirty somewhere. It's yeah, it's true. It's beer thirty somewhere. <laughs> beer thirty. Okay, yeah. I'll have to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so if, if people, um, if people are coming into your, uh, your brewery, what, what should they try out? What would you recommend? Like what, what are your signature things that you think somebody should try for the first time? Well, our, our two signature beers, um, are an ESB, which is an extra special bitters. You know, when you're watching the movies and stuff and the guy walks in to the, to the pub and says, give me a pint of bitters. <laughs> that's what it is. It's okay. extra special bitters. <laughs> uh, the other one is our Scottish ale. We, we do a traditional Scottish ale. It's not a high wit beer. They're not high in alcohol. Um, they're not over carbonated. And we keep our coolers at 40 degrees instead of 32 degrees because our beer actually has flavor. You don't have to try and kill it with the cold. (laughs) Um, We do try and brew in the old English style. Okay. Which is, again, keeping your ABVs, alcohol by volume, uh, between four and five. Okay. And not over carbonating your beer. So you don't have this huge head of you know, three inches of foam on top of your beer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's always obnoxious. And you, it is. <laughs> and, and then, then you can enjoy a couple of pints and not get hammered. Yeah. <laughs> well, that always happens to me when I'm like pouring it at home and then I've got like, I've got to, I've never figured out the right angle or whatever it is to get it to not get <laughs> the foam where I'm like, Oh, I'm just gonna have to wait five minutes before I can fill up my glass. <laughs> All right. Let's see if you try this. Put you your go. glass in the refrigerator. Okay. After you've washed it really well. All right. Take it out, rinse it really quick, hold it at 45 degrees and pour your beer down it 
So yeah. you get about three quarters full and then tilt your glass up. Okay. So that's don't pour too fast. Okay. Well, that's that's good to know. I mean, my friends always make fun of me if I'm pouring pouring some beers for everyone. Like, what? How did you get it that way? I don't know. It just it always comes out this way for me. Could people get your uh, your brews outside of Florida, or do they have to go to uh, the brewery to get it? Not yet. They have okay. to go to the brewery, but we're in about thirty different venues right now. Okay. So you can go to a Mellow Mushroom and get us. You can go oh, to nice. ABC. We're on a growler station. Cool. Where you bring in your own growler and fill it up. We're in a half wall. We're in. I can throw out a bunch of names. I don't yeah. know all of them. Uh, but people could but probably yeah, find out can, on your site. People can get it outside of a, our place. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Next yeah. year's plan is to get a, a start on a major production brewery. So in about three years, you should be able to get it in you know uh, major grocery stores and, and places like that. Oh, nice! It'll be fun. <laughs> uh, and, if, and if and if you'd like to donate, it's www. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, put it out there. <laughs> um, uh, John, did you have any more questions about beer that you wanted to ask? No. No. <laughs> okay. John's already had six beers today, so he's 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 all Seven. beard up. Seven? Seven. Oh, my gosh, John. Oh. Is that why you clean so early today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty. Um, John well, and I had a conversation slightly earlier today. That's that's where that question was. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so where can people find you then if they want to if they want to know more about your beer or if they're in Florida and want to want to stop by? Well, if they're in, if they're in Florida, uh, we're in Sanford, Florida. Okay. Um, we have a website, www.wopshopsbrewing.com. Okay. Uh, they can follow us on Facebook. Cool. And if they follow us on Facebook, that's kind of the best because all our events are posted there. We have live music every week. Um, we have, you know, some blowout parties every once in a while. Uh, once a month we close down a whole block and we have a block party. So we have live music out there, vendors and. Oh. We have an, we're one of the only places that's dog friendly. We have a big beer garden. Oh wow! Uh, we even have a we even have a dog menu. Really? On our restaurant menu? Yeah. You have dog beer too? <laughs> yes, we actually have dog beer. Really? <laughs> it's yeah. like the Mackenzie brothers. <laughs> <They're dog. laughs> uh, but it's it's actually it's really a dog beer, so there's no hops or alcohol or anything oh, like God. that. <laughs> That's funny. Right. So, uh, Sanford, that's pretty close to Orlando. So if someone has a layover at the airport, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to your place. I, I would. Yeah, no, no pun intended. Yeah. It's, so it, they can. No, no pun intended. They, <laughs> they, can, they can hail a cab, maybe by you know driven by someone named Caesar, and uh, <laughs> get a nice fill up of morning wood. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right, John. Well, th- uh, thank you so much, Peter, for doing this. And we'll have to have you have you back on when you when it's available everywhere too, so we could uh, we could uh, you know announce it to everyone. That'll be fun. Sure, that would be great. Awesome. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks again, Peter. Hey, this part of the show is brought to you by Phoenix Shaving. If you like to shave. And you are a man or a woman. I mean, some some women are hairy. That's all right. That's okay. No judgment. But if you, uh, you're you you're a guy that likes to shave and appreciates the finer things in life, go to gentlemanscofflaw.com slash shave. Um, that link helps support the show. And you could check out some of Douglas Smythe's amazing shaving soaps, aftershave colognes. You'll be blown away at all the stuff he has. Scents for days. He is like the Walter White of artisan soap making. He's got this lab basically there in in Phoenix, Arizona where he uh, creates his soaps and and he cures them. It's an independent business. You're not giving your money to all those guys that are ripping everybody off with razors. Right now you can get some wet shaving starter packs. So it has everything you need to get started wet shaving. You know, you can get a sets that have the safety razor, the brush, the soap, the aftershave. Tons of great scents to pick from. I've mentioned before, one of my favorites is Tombstone. Also, they have Sundown, which is like a classic barbershop scent. Um, they've got uh, Cavendish, which smells like, like pipe tobacco. 
which is amazing. I tell you, I've been using this stuff and I don't get any razor burn or razor bumps anymore. This stuff is amazing, especially the aftershave. It just removes all irritation, bumps, redness. It's like I've never looked so dapper in my life, and that's thanks to Phoenix Shaving. So go to gentlemanscofflaw.com slash shave and stop being a slave to the cartridge razor shave. All right, uh, coming to a close here. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, for that Thank segment, you. I learned a lot about beer, which I already liked to begin with, but now I a little bit appreciate it a little bit better now, I think, right? I mean, and it's now always I better know when you why IPAs it. suck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? I've had a couple that I've liked, but uh, I don't generally like them. I think it's because American IPAs are extra hoppy. It's like they figured, oh, people like hops. Let's hop the crap out of everything. Yeah. But um, anyway, yeah. um, so now it's time to announce the, the winner of the Phoenix Shaving After Shaving Cologne Giveaway. Uh, let's get a little drum roll. <laughs> Uh, all right, and the winner of the, of the Lavender Planet uh, sh- after shaving cologne is Mr. Fred Rowe on Instagram. Uh, so thank you for entering the contest, and uh, you will get your um, aftershave very soon. And uh, next week we are giving away on the same, on the, you know, on the same segment, we're giving away the uh, High Jump 47 from Phoenix After Shaving. Uh, what kind? What's the deal with that cologne? Do you know about that? Uh? Yeah, I so um, I haven't used the cologne, but I have used the deodorant, and mm-hmm. it was a uh, it was a very uh, nice. It's a very uh, good smelling deodorant, very classic. Um, and you know, I, I was curious because it's got the uh, it's got a picture of a navy man on it, uh, yeah. a seaman, if you will. And, uh, <laughs> seaman, hey, 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 settle, <laughs> settle. And uh, I was curious as to why uh, it had that picture on there. And I guess it's uh, Admiral Byrd, um, a man who went on an expedition to the rainforest. And I guess he uh, he found this scent that came from some Brazilian tree. It's from the sap of a uh, Brazilian tree. And uh, it has like a talcum kind of smell to it, but yeah. with a little bit of uh, uh, what are the other scents? I guess uh, I think it's on the bottle: um, rose water, glycerin, seaweed extract. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think glycerin <laughs> smells like anything. I didn't retain everything about glycerin the article. Glycerin is just a lubricant. Like, that being said, I it's definitely one of my favorites of their of their line, and uh, I like it. So um, you know, on the bottle, it kind of looks like Edward Norton. It in, does uh, a little. Or you know what? No, 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 no. It looks like the guy from. Uh, it looks like the admiral from. John's not looking. <laughs> it looks like the admiral from Pearl Harbor. Um, the movie, the Michael Bay movie. Yeah, the guy who plays him. I can't. I can never remember his name, but he's like a classic actor. Well, if you want to enter to win that, you could uh, join us on Instagram I, and, uh, and and enter that contest. Um, I you, wonder if you drank. The if it would get you drunk, I don't Should think try that's. Sometime? I think you probably a, go blind. I don't think that's a sound <laughs> recommendation. Uh, I'm just curious, John. Um, what what's another way people can support the show? Money. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, you can. We, we could, could send John out there with his hat to like panhandle in parking lots. Yeah, well, I do play a mean um, harmonica. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. that's. I feel like anybody can play a mean harmonica because like it's always in the same key and anything you play on it sounds like it I could think we be just, a song. Whoa, Jordan! I think we just lost all the harmonica playing <laughs> audience we had. <laughs> I just you remember as a kid, my players. brother and I had harmonicas and we'd be like in the schoolyard and we'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought we were so good, but we were just blowing in and out, and it's all was it all sounded like it was it's something. Like, it's like a little bit um, more sophisticated. Uh, what is it? The Peruvian pan flute or whatever <laughs> those, those pipes that they play. No, um, we just lost our pan flute audience too. <laughs> Peru is off the you know, off the charts. But you could join us on the merch shop on our website, gentlemanscofflaw dot com, and uh, you can, there's a tons of stuff you could buy there to help support the show and it's cool stuff like a lot of the times you know merchandise can be kind of lame they just slap their logo on something sure but we've got cool stuff we've got flasks we've got pint glasses we've got little punk rock pins it's all 
scoff law appropriate, I feel yeah. like. It's curated so that... Water, um, water bottles. No, we don't have water bottles. We don't have water bottles. Water bottles. We don't endorse drinking water. We don't endorse drinking water. <laughs> what, are, what are you thinking? Um, um, so if you want to do that, you can you can do that too. And uh, send us a picture of your of any of the gentlemen's golf law uh, podcast stuff that you own, yeah. and we'll repost it. Uh, John, are you going to join us on the Go Ruck Challenge? I don't think so, but I think we should have some uh, <laughs> cereal bowls made out of John's wood smart. with our emblem engraved in the bottom. So once you Ooh. get through all the milk, you see it at the bottom. Once you, once you get really done with your Count Chocula, <laughs> you, you just, you love. I'm a Captain this. Crunch man. Ah, uh, what are you doing to yourself, man? The, it shreds the top of your, the roof of your mouth. No, it strengthens the roof of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it builds character for the roof of your mouth. It's, it's no pain, ca- no gain. <laughs> Around this time, well, uh, to be fair, Count Chocula is seasonal. It, it only comes in, you know, like around this time. This really? Year. Yeah, it is. I did not know that. Yeah, you only get it around Halloween. I haven't had cereal in years. We never buy it. You're missing out. I know. It's It's... As a kid, I used to have cereal all the time for breakfast. And and uh, in Canada, we had corn pops, but they were different than corn pops here. They were more like they were basically like Captain Crunch, but in, in circles, like in, only in, worse and more socialist. <laughs> that is funny. That is you had to give bizarre. some to your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is very bizarre. That um, certain foods are different in different countries. Like yeah. I remember when I was in uh, England, like the Snickers bars were different. There mm-hmm. and then uh, in uh, in Bulgaria, like the Fanta was was different. The Fanta was more like uh, Orangina <laughs> or whatever. Like such an arrogant prick calling it Fanta. Fanta. The Fanta. Fanta. <laughs> what, 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 what Robbie, you want, give what me you the Fanta. Fanta, like some hayseed from. Uh, from <laughs> I'm not even going to try to alienate from another Missouri. audience. Um, uh, Missouri, <laughs> Missouri. Um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I just remember I, I like we also had sugar uh, sugar. Crisp was golden crisp. Yeah, Mountain yeah. Dew's formula was different, yeah, we had golden and crisp. so were Oreos. Really, I think our, I think ours was. Did they change crisp. the name because it wasn't PC? They called it sugar crisp. Did it have a bear on it? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. I think I'm pretty sure ours was golden oh, crisp. Okay. But I, for some reason, I do. There was also golden you snacks. The frog. Enough. Oh, Gold Max. Yeah. Right. Now we're getting off in the weeds. We are getting we off. We finished the weeds. this show a long time ago, <laughs> we're guys. We're podcasting from the cereal aisle. So at if you, you know what happens is it's so freaking hot in here. It's like a sweat lodge. We're getting loopy, you know and we just doing? can't stop talking. We're Kim Jong Uning it because um, <laughs> 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 you guys don't even know what the purpose of that joke <laughs> just is. Just funny. <laughs> just his matter. name He's is funny, funny looking. <laughs> he has specific. <laughs> <laughs> he has specific, um, like he had a specific sauna flown in and built for him in uh, North Korea, so that he would avoid hangovers. Like he, he like he parties all night. He saunas in the morning, and I guess he's fine to rule the country and threaten threaten the rest of the free world. He's just a vision of health. Oh yeah, that uh, <laughs> up there, yeah, because everybody else is starving to death. <laughs> like he's the healthiest guy in the country because nobody else is. Uh, is is eating? Um, Have you oh. noticed he's he's called all out war on that ocean there, where he keeps losing all his rockets? North uh, the the Sea of Japan, he's blowing up all the fish. Yeah, oh, gosh, Anyways. what a jerk! Well, the Japanese have to get their sushi from somewhere. Yeah, well, we gotta get rid of making this that, guy. Making, making that job for the fishermen easier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they just go out there with a net and just. All start right, I think whatever. now we're getting way off the rails. Uh, Sorry. John, you are a gentleman in a scoff law, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Donovan, you are a gentleman in a scoff law, my friend. I concur. And it's time to end the show because I am starting to slur my words. You guys have a great week. This has been the Gentleman Scofflaw Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Visit us on the interwebs at gentlemanscofflaw.com. Captain says, his ice on the river, we ain't getting home if we don't break through. So damn cold, I can't help but shiver. Ah!